some bands and I get some bands on my little baby. Yeah. I get some bands and I get some bands on my little baby. Yeah. I get some bands and I get some bands on my little baby. Yeah. I get some bands and I get some bands on my little baby. Yeah. 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 Lace up and drip it down, take her wherever. Yeah. Say the word and we take trips on with whatever. Yeah. Don't bring me down, she built me up, not talking teddy bears. She not bunny, I'm not cut, but if it needs it down the ride. What's up? What's good? What you just watched was entirely shot on the brand new iPhone SE 2020 edition? iPhone SE 2? Yeah, let's call it that. What? I know, right? Crazy. Actually, I don't know yet. I didn't actually shoot the sequence yet, but I am so convinced that the footage is going to be straight fire that I'm going to roll with it. In this video, I'm gonna bring you guys behind the scenes as I shoot a shoe commercial style video using these brand new vans that I got the other day. And I'm gonna shoot everything on the iPhone SE 2. We're gonna talk a bit about its camera capabilities or lack of, I don't know yet. Let's find out. If you're new here, my name is Dom. I make weekly videos about photography and videography. So if that's something that you're into, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell, do all the things. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. My wife recently got me a brand new pair of shoes and I've been holding off on wearing them because I figured it'd be really cool to make a video and take some photos of these shoes while they were still brand new. These are actually the same pair of shoes that I had before, but um, you know. Today's goal is to shoot a commercial style sequence using only the iPhone SE 2. And I thought it'd be cool to bring you guys along and show you guys kind of some tips and tricks on what I'm doing and how I'm achieving these looks right out of camera. Going off on a bit of a theme here, up until a few days ago, I was actually still using the old iPhone SE and I've been dying to try the brand new iPhone SE's video and photo capabilities. I feel like my old iPhone was pretty much one of the last iPhones to have a bit of a crummy camera so I'm really excited to try this new one out. I'm not a big tech nerd but I am a pretty big camera nerd so when I heard 4k 60 frames per second and 1080 240 frames per second this phone actually has the same kind of main camera as the iPhone 11 and the same processor as well I just knew I had to try this out. 400 bucks 400 US dollars this phone I'm pretty excited. I won't be using any gimbals. I'm gonna be doing all of this handheld. I did purchase myself a moment case because I eventually intend on buying some of those sweet lenses and possibly a gimbal as well. But for now, I really wanted to try this completely stripped, no gadgets, right out of the box. I'm also only gonna be using the phone's native camera app, but I do intend on eventually making a follow-up video using an app that you can actually have more control over the camera, something like the Moment app and possibly with the addition of gimbals and their lenses and all that. If that's something you'd be interested in, definitely let me know in the comments below. So you've seen the shot on iPhone billboards all over the city. You've probably seen that Selena Gomez video that was entirely filmed on iPhone 11. So we've effectively seen what these cameras are capable of. What we've got to understand though is that outside of the actual phone itself as a camera, these people had everything in their control, an unlimited budget basically, to put everything else in their favor. We're talking the most expensive gimbals, art directors, placement, makeup, lighting equipment. They're working with top tier directors and editors in post. So I'm not expecting to make something that cool, but I am pretty confident that with just a few budget lights and this apartment, I'll be able to make something pretty damn cool. Let's see what we got. All right, so I've got my shoes set up right here and I'm gonna do probably a couple few different setups. But for now, I've only got this newer light here flashed down underneath so that when I'm taking a video from here, we can actually see some light shining from underneath on the table and kind of just give it a bit of a rim light look. I'm using this soft box right here to give the general light, but I don't want it to be too bright either. So I'm gonna have this be pretty neutral. I've just got a white wall here on a white table. Uh, I think it's gonna fit with the shoes that are just black and white, very classic kind of look. And I've also got these two cheap 
lights here that I don't know if I'll actually use them, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna try and find some creative ways to use them as well. Got this little light bar that actually fits inside of the shoe, so maybe that'll do something cool with maybe some light coming out. But anyways, we're just gonna try and get a few establishing shots. We're gonna try a bit of slow motion, a bit of 24p, and kind of see what it looks like. So initial things that I am noticing, it's kind of a hassle to have this phone without anything stabilizing it and to be hand holding it on a table and sliding it because of the buttons, right? So there's the power button on the side. If I wanna have the camera really low and a low angle closest to the table and every time I press a little too hard on it, it closes the screen and stops the recording. So. That's getting a bit annoying. As far as the quality so far looks really cool. This image, this first image I'm taking looks really dope already. I tried using the 240 frames per second, but I think my lights are flickering in the shot. So maybe something I'll be able to deal with in post, but I'm not sure I'll be able to use that footage. So I might stick to 120 frames per second, which is already slow-mo enough for sure. So I'm going to keep trying and get some new shots. Man. What's really impressing me so far is how close you can get to the subject with it still being in focus. I am literally putting my lens right up against the shoe and it is doing effectively a really, really macro shot, which is really cool. And I think I'm gonna try and really emphasize this in this edit because honestly, it's quite a different look. I'm gonna try putting this inside of the shoe and see if it can come out with some light and maybe do something cool. <laughs> so I just caught myself, I guess, because this is a phone, I've been kind of messing up between going vertical and horizontal when shooting, which I guess in post shouldn't be too bad of an issue. I'll probably be able to do something stylistic with that, but <laughs> really confusing trying to shoot with the phone in a, in a traditional sense. Definitely pretty hard to get some stable shots with this being this is so light of a device to hold in your hands. Obviously something like a DSLR, something that has a bit more weight to it, is gonna be a lot easier to stabilize. So this isn't ideal for that, but I'm coming up with some pretty cool shots. I'm pretty stoked so far. Okay, so I'm almost done. I'm about to wrap this up. I got a whole bunch of slow-mo shots from different angles. Maybe watching this video, it didn't seem like I was getting many angles at all because I kind of seemed to be in the same place. But because I wanted to always have this white wall in the back, I actually changed the position of the shoes to make sure that they were always facing this wall. So I got a whole bunch of slow motion footage that I think is gonna look really cool for the montage. Now I'm gonna get just a whole bunch of different 24 frame per second shots. I don't know if I'll be using them, but I've got an idea in mind in terms of the edit that might incorporate this well. So I'm gonna finish this off with just doing some random shots like that and just gonna wrap it up. All right. <laughs> 
I think I got enough footage. I've just been taking pictures for the past five minutes now, but we're gonna fire everything up into the computer and try to make a sequence out of it. Probably gonna edit this tomorrow, so flash forward to tomorrow. Future Dom here, just finished putting together the sequence and I've got to say, I am pretty damn impressed. I'm really happy with the result I was able to get doing this video and honestly, I am really surprised by the image quality. The video looks stunning. I had some pretty proper lighting going on so that obviously does help, but that just goes to show that this camera is actually really, really capable when put under the right circumstances. I also took a few photos that I ended up using in the sequence as well. I did some pretty minor tweaks when it came to Lightroom afterwards, and these photos looked really, really cool. I'm actually really stoked on how all of these photos turned out. So I made a list of the good and the bad. I won't be going into too much detail for everything, but this is what I put together throughout the process of filming this whole video. I did make a list on my computer, so I will be looking at my screen, sorry. Let's get into it. So let's start with the bad. Honestly, most of the things that I have to say in terms of bad have got to do with the lack of control that you've got within the native camera app of the phone itself. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can get some different apps, paid and free, that give you a lot more control over how you're filming and the different frame rates and stuff like that. But right out of the native app, uh, color balance was a pretty big issue between different shots when trying to match them on my timeline. It was pretty rough in certain instances because of the different colored lighting and different lighting situations that were changing throughout the shoot. Exposure was a bit of an issue unless you were doing the exposure lock, which is actually a pretty cool feature, but you definitely had to do it every single time. So basically, if you tap your screen, you can drag up and down to get the exposure to where you'd like it. And then if you hold it down long enough, it'll lock those controls. So it'll lock the focus and it'll lock the exposure as well. And that was absolutely necessary because if not, it was kind of on an auto mode. So as you were moving the camera, the app would try to change the exposure settings and it would really, really show. Same thing with the focus. If you didn't have it locked in, you could kind of see it trying to focus as you were moving your camera, which wasn't a particularly nice look. But that being said, you can do the exposure lock and that fixes all of those issues. Another thing is just the general ergonomics of having a lightweight device. Device, so it is pretty hard to do anything super stable with a device like this, as I mentioned earlier, which brings me to my next point being, there's actually some auto stabilization settings that are turned on in the native app that you cannot turn off. So I had a few shots of mine that were completely ruined because of this automatic stabilization. If it was just like a smooth motion and there wasn't any real jitter, it, it was actually helping a lot. It was pretty cool. But on the off chance that it was actually kind of jittery, you could really see the footage go kind of all jello-y and you could tell that it was doing some warp stabilization after the fact and it just doesn't look good. And last but not least, by far the most annoying thing by a long shot for this entire process was the file format. Now I know I've said out a bunch of times already, different apps probably have a lot more control over this, but using the native app, effectively bringing footage into Premiere was a big pain in the butt. I ended up reading a lot about the subject and most of these issues seem to be pretty specific to iPhone videos only. So these are the few things that I ended up finding and I won't go too much into detail again because I could probably talk about this for a very long time, but it basically came down to two different things. So basically there are two videos Video modes. There's the regular video mode, which gives you up to the 4K 60 frames per second. It does the 30 frames, 24 frames. But then there's the slow-mo mode, which is a kind of separate thing within the app. And it lets you do 120 frames per second as well as 240 frames per second. That being said, whenever you re-watch any of these slow-mo video clips on your phone itself, you'll see that 
it kind of randomly chooses where the slow motion actually happens and it doesn't necessarily happen on the entire clip. That being said, you can change it yourself within the app and that's where it's really important. I had to go through all of those slow motion clips and make sure that I took all of the slow motion bits completely out. So I just kind of dragged it up until the end point of the video and kind of got rid of it. And the reason it's able to do this is because the file is actually recorded in a variable frame rate. So when you bring it into Premiere specifically, Premiere has a very hard time dealing with these variable frame rates. So it starts to be all jittery, it lags a bunch, it doesn't really know how to process the video well. There are different applications that you can find to convert the footage into a more normal kind of fixed frame rate footage and that is supposed to fix the issue. But that means taking all of that slow motion footage and effectively putting it through a program, trying to tweak the settings, exporting it again, and then bringing it into Premiere, which I found to be kind of long and cumbersome because I had so much footage. I can't speak to this for any other programs or bringing this onto a Mac machine because I'm using a PC and obviously this being an Apple product, maybe the Mac side of things really deals with this a lot easier, but in my case, it was a big hurdle. The second thing I found that is related to the same point I just talked about is to absolutely interpret your footage. Now, I don't always interpret my footage. I know I probably should, but I don't normally have to interpret my footage when I'm bringing stuff from my DSLR onto Premiere into a timeline. I can kind of just adjust things as I work with them on the timeline. But I found that working with these files on my timeline did not work at all unless I interpreted the footage to the same frame rate as my sequence. Now, this is a pretty simple step. You basically just select your clips in the project panel and you select interpret footage. You can set your frame rate there. I set mine to 24 because I was in a 24 frames per second timeline and that's it. It's a pretty easy fix, but I found that I wasn't able to work with any of the footage at all if I wasn't doing this step. All in all though, I was able to eventually make a really solid edit in my opinion. I really think it turned out to be super cool. The quality is great. So enough with the bad, let's talk about the good. First things first, I mean, this thing is super easy to use. You've probably already used the video app within your phone before and it's pretty intuitive. You can kind of mess around with the exposure and Again, exposure lock and do all these things and it's pretty intuitive. You don't really have to take a crash course on it. It's pretty much like you take it out of the box and you already know how it works. So that was something that I really enjoyed. Aside from that, I mentioned earlier the incredibly small focus distance. I was able to put this up super, super close to whatever I was filming and still have it be in focus, which is something you can't really achieve with a DSLR unless you're using a macro specific lens. So I found that to be super cool cool. The image quality in this is really, really great. Again, if you're using this in great lighting, this is a really, really solid camera. The accessories for this are pretty inexpensive if you're comparing it to a DSLR. So if we're talking like, I don't know, just a rig to kind of add handles to it, or if you want to buy a gimbal, lenses for this thing, all of these things are considerably cheaper than using a DSLR and trying to rig up a gimbal and all these things. And then lastly, I know it's super cheesy and everyone said it, but it's true. I mean, the best camera is the one that you've got on you. And I'll be honest, I don't always have my digital camera with me. It's happened so many times to me where I haven't had my camera with me and I've just told myself, damn, I really wish I had my camera because I stumbled upon something that looks cool either for a photo or a video. And with my old camera, I just wasn't able to do it justice. I feel like with this camera, I'll be able to take it out a lot more and not really bring my camera with me at all times. If I'm just taking a walk with the wife, I'll be able to just, you know, take a walk and I already have my phone on me. So if I do see something cool, I'll still be able to take some high quality photos and videos if I feel like it. So long story long, Apps like the Filmmaker Moment app definitely give you a lot more control over the video specs of this thing. I mean, frame rate, shutter speed, color balance, turning off the digital stabilization, all these things are available with these different apps. Using a gimbal will make this a lot smoother and a lot easier to use as well. But 
All in all, I was able to make a pretty cool video if I may say so myself, so I'm incredibly happy with what I got. And this is a $400 phone. I would have this phone on me regardless of its camera capabilities just because I need a phone. So for the price, this is pretty, pretty ridiculous. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And yeah, so again, if you guys would like to see a follow-up video, maybe using some gimbals, some different apps, maybe some moment lenses and stuff like that, and try to see the difference between what I was able to get handheld versus maybe using a gimbal and having more control over the settings, do let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Oh, Ugh. what was that? <laughs>